In this episode, you will learn more about the history behind Lean. Hi there, Matt Spencer here, Shaper of Business Excellence. Improvement of the way that we're doing business and the way that we are as individuals. We have used that since the beginning of time. Otherwise, we haven't improved as much as we had. And uh, we will, of course, continue that journey and become even better in the coming years and centuries and so on. But when it comes then to working with the constant improvement, Kaizen. Kaizen means good way, which means in the philosophy, it means that we will follow the good way. We will become better tomorrow than we are today. Always better, day out and day in. The whole interest and the whole need of that started with the industrialism. From the beginning, when we started the era of industrialism, we didn't really need to care about how good things were that we produced because the, the demand was so much higher than the supply were, which meant that we made a bicycle, we could just oh, everybody wants that bicycle. <laughs> That's the good thing with market economy, that as soon as someone starts to do something and we see that it could be a good thing to start to do the same, we have the competition. Others will do the same thing as we do. And if we do bikes, someone else will start fairly quickly to do bikes as well. Anyway, then when we have that competition, we needed to start to think about how we should improve our way of doing whatever it is that we do. So if it's bicycles again, we need to do these bicycles in a better way. We need to do them with a higher quality because people have now two bicycles to compare or three or four or five and ten. So quality means something which it didn't do in the beginning. So back then in the beginning, that, that happened it exploded in the beginning of the 20th century. Then we started to think more about those things. And I would mention a couple of persons that have been involved in creating what we now call lean. And uh, the first out is actually Henry Ford. He started to work with improving the way of manufacturing cars. And he, he created the design of manufacture, the DFM. And that's a concept that derived from his wishes of emphasizing the importance of standardizing individual parts as well as eliminating the redundance of components within a, a business. Other people working with this was Frederick Taylor that created the principles of scientific management in 1911. And he also talked about the just-in-time, making it the right material in the right position in the production line at the right time. At the same time, we have Edward Deming and Walter Schuhart that worked at Bell Laboratories and both worked with statistics. And especially Walter Schuhart then were very deep into the statistics and finding out where errors could become a reality or maybe were a reality within the switchboards that Bell had. That statistic view that Walter Schuhart had became also a part of the Lean Six Sigma, or I would say Six Sigma because Lean Six Sigma is something that we use today, but Six Sigma is a model of how to improve your business. And it, the basis of it is statistics. And it's used then together with Lean these days because it will take you towards becoming a Lean uh, organization. Edward Deming, he helped the Japanese after the Second World War in building their society. All the manufacturing or a lot of the manufacturing in the country were crushed during the Second World War. So now it was time to the Americans help the Japanese, their, their former enemy, to rebuild their country and rebuilding it with democracy and all those things as well. Deming helped the Japanese manufacturer to become more, actually to put these things together. And Deming, he then then ran into people like Shingo and Taishi Ono that were working with creating the Toyota manufacturing process. And them together, and also with Genishi Taguchi, a Japanese business statistician, they created, again with statistics, with knowing exactly what you're doing and where things go wrong, you can find out a lot about your business and that together with working with processes and so on they start to create a new powerful way of doing business so that took the japanese 
to the next step. And among them, Toyota, that created the Toyota production system. And Toyota production system made Toyota one of the largest car manufacturers in the world. And they're the most profitable as well. And their processes that they improved so much, that helped also Toyota to be one of the fastest in producing new car models. Much, much faster than others. So they can produce the car models quicker. They can launch new models to the market while others had the same model for a longer period and they had a higher quality as well so they were known then from the beginning people talked about jap crap <laughs> and um, we shouldn't have done that because fairly soon they started to produce high quality things they're now the best in producing it they had the highest quality and now we're comparing then models of, of mass production cars to mass production cars it's hard to compare it to handmade cars like rolls royce and such cars because they might have a higher quality but also a higher price tag Anyway, so Toyota production system then, that started to be studied around the world. And among others, John Krafzik started to look into that in a joint venture between General Motors and Toyota. And he then continued to work with MIT. And there he coined the term lean for what Toyota have done and others as well. But Toyota is the most famous. So lean became a term 1988, but as a basis we have the Toyota production system. Jon Krafzik continued to work with the cars and Google and the self-driving cars. But what we talked about so far is that all this lean, all this manufacturing, that is of goods. I see a product as good and or service. So that was a little bit about the history behind lean. I hope you uh, got something out of this and that you will join me in the next episode because I will talk more about why we need to have Lean in our service organizations. I will also explain the 14 uh, management principles in Lean. I go, go deep dive into each of those 14 in the upcoming episodes. Mm -hmm.